so today we're going to do a demo on designing animal characters. And when you're designing animal characters, there's a few things you want to keep in mind that I'm going to go over before we go ahead and get started. First of all, if you're drawing real animals, you're going to want to practice by drawing that animal from practice. I mean, from reference, you're going to look up images and you're going to draw that animal over and over and over again. If you're drawing dogs, Maybe you have a dog, draw your dog. If you have friends of dogs, go draw their dogs, that sort of thing. You're also going to practice cartooning that animal from reference, taking what you see and converting it into your art style. And you're gonna practice drawing often. So we're gonna start out with a cat, cause that's an animal that easy to find reference for. Um, if you know how to draw a cat, you can figure out how to draw a lion, you can figure out how to draw a tiger. A lot of mythical animals are kind of built around the bodies of lions and cats. And I have cats, so i start by drawing cats. And I have some reference pulled up on Google Images. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with kind of jelly bean anatomy. where I use round amorphic shapes to start gesturing it in. And I find for cats, using jelly bean anatomy is kind of the best method to go about breaking down their anatomy. So I'm not as concerned with like, well, where's the rib cage? Where's the pelvis? I'm really just doing kind of loose gestural sketches mostly figuring out how cats move and how they hold their bodies. And considering I have a cat character in my comic, I should really practice drawing cats a little bit every single day. I mean, I certainly have enough reference that that's not really an issue. So I'm thinking about the line of action. I'm thinking about really capturing the gesture. And these are really, really loose. And if I were designing an animal character, I would probably do a hundred of these sort of loose gestural figure poses, just kind of figuring out how cats hold their bodies. Okay, so Next, I'm going to draw those same cats, but I'm going to try to think about them a little more structurally. I'm going to think about cartooning them. Okay, so I have my line of action. I didn't really leave room for his head, so I'll move over here. Line of action, rib cage. His weight is off onto one paw over here. The other paw is kind of up. And this is his back, his belly. And then his little feet paws are almost hidden by his britches. His tail comes around like that. And then he's got his head kind of kipped off to the side over there. So, I'm gonna sketch in his muzzle, his nose. And there's kind of stereotypical shorthand ways of drawing a cat's nose. Like, you can think about it like a triangle, but it's really kind of a triangle with these like indents in it. And then they've got little split lips. And this cat has eyes that kind of lean up and then come down into a point down here and he's got kind of a football shaped head so I'm taking what I see in the reference and I'm kind of converting it to a cartoony style he's also got like a white sort of mask on his muzzle And this is the foot. It's carrying more of his weight. 
so just like when I'm drawing humans, I start by drawing kind of the large overarching shapes and then I tighten it up into progressively smaller shapes. And then at the end, I would start adding like the stripes and his fur and those sort of details. Next, I'm gonna draw a really cute little baby kitten. Looks kind of dopey. So we start with the big old round kitten head looking up. And he's made little kitten low. So if we're cartooning, we're gonna wanna start exaggerating features. So since we got a kitten, we're gonna give him a really nice, soft, round back and really cute little paws that are all tucked in. And then we're gonna start planning his face. So we're gonna draw his muzzle and his eyes are kind of spaced far apart. And you have to talk in the baby voice when you're drawing a little baby kitten. That's a rule. And then this little guy has little cheeky fluffs. So I'm gonna switch over to a darker color. And he's got really, really, really round eyes. And he would have huge reflections if I were, were at that stage. So it helps to think of your animal characters as characters and to sort of think about their individual characteristics. What makes their kitty face or their puppy face or their Tyrannosaurus Rex face individual? What makes them unique? Because even if you're not an animal person, every you'll admit that every animal, when you get to know them, kind of has a distinct look to them. They have like, kind of individualized features. This little guy is just super fuzzums. So that is one of the features that if I were drawing him as a character, I would want to make sure I include how fuzzums and fluffums he is. All right, we're going to do one more cat. And this one is a munchkin cat. So he's definitely got some really unique features to him. So I'm gonna draw the line of action first. Head, and this cat looks like he's not really happy about his fate being born as a munchkin cat. And in this photo, he's got his tail kind of kipped around. And he's got a lower muzzle with a larger nose. I mean, he's got beautiful large eyes. And cheeky fluffs that kind of go down into the rest of his body. So I've got the basic outline sketched out. Now I'm gonna work on really trying to capture this cat's individual features. His nose is more diamond shaped. So see that's another sort of individualized aspect of this particular animal. Just think of munchkin cats as being kind of like cotton from King of the Hill. They don't have any shins. And we'll just shade that back leg. It's, it's behind. And this cat has really long tum fluffs and I need to arch the back a little bit more. So what I've shown you is useful when I'm drawing people's pets, when I'm doing caricatures, they've provided a photo, they want the cat drawn as it's kind of depicted in the photo. So they're looking for a caricaturized portrait of a specific pose. But what if we're taking a specific animal and we're turning it into a character? And we're gonna do that with my cat, Bowie. So this is Bowie. He is an eight-year-old. Uh, he's probably part Russian blue, but really he's a stray and he's been my buddy 
for eight years. He's got some really distinct features that are fun to draw. So I'm gonna do a little quick sketch of my boy here. So he's got a big nose, but he's also got these like really sharp David Bowie-esque cheekbones. And people would say he's quite handsome, but he has, well, he's got a sweet personality, but he's kind of a gross cat. And he's got like this long kind of blocky nose. And then we used to call him Booger Eyed Bo because his eyes always had allergy bulbs in them. But he's been on antibiotics and they've really cleared up. Where are you, Bo? Oh, well, he is not in the room. So when I draw Bowie, Bowie, who has a very distinct face. I usually caricar caricaturize him by emphasizing those cheekbones. He also has fangies. He's got a little bit of an overbite. And he's just kind of the dopiest cat. But that's my boy. And he's got, like he looks like he should be an evil supervillain's cat but he's actually very sweet. That's kind of what his eye looks like. And his pupils don't dilate often, so they don't do the sharp slit thing. They stay, not dilate, um, contract often. They stay dilated. And I usually buy nice dog collars for him because they don't really sell nice collars for male cats. Like it's all dumb stuff with glitter and bows, so. We usually buy dog collars for him. And he's got kind of a long forehead. And then he's got big old ears. He also grins, which if you didn't know him, it looks very gargoyly and kind of ugly, but that's what he does when he's super, super happy. He also has kind of a trapezoidal shaped head. So that is how I would caricature or cartoon a specific cat. So what about a more generic cat like Pancake from Seven Inch Kara? He's a black oriental kitten. Originally he started out with a really distinct look and it's kind of gotten softened over time. So for Pancake, he's a kitten so he's got a big head with big eyes, because people resonate with that. They think that's cute. He's got bangies, because I think that's cute. And it's kind of a combination of several cats I've loved. So I keep his head pretty round these days. I give him big ears, and I use his ears to help him kind of emote. So that is your basic pancake. All right, let's do something that's a little less cat-like. Let's do, I wanna do a dino. I used to draw a lot of really cute dinos. Let's do a triceratops. So of course I'm pulling up my reference and what I see is a really large egg-shaped body. little stubby neck, a long head, a bony frill, two horns. Often they have kind of that hooked. So what we're really thinking about is our major forms and sort of what stands out to you about the animal. Digigrade legs that are really stocky. And then on some of these examples are short little tail. So depending on what direction you want to go, if you want this to be cute, 
Um, you're going to really emphasize like the round body and maybe make the head bigger, make the frill bigger, make the horns shorter, but really thick and make the legs really, really stocky. But that's if you want cute. And that's just a type of cute. There are many types of cute. So I'm kind of using basic construction to sort of feel my way around this animal's anatomy. And if this is a character I was going to be drawing multiple times, I would do a lot of studies of this animal. I would draw it from all different angles. I'd go out and buy a plastic toy and practice drawing it from all those angles. And this is true for any animal that I don't have like daily access to. So any animal that isn't a pet of mine, I would try to go out to the zoo, for example, if I was going to draw you know, tigers pretty frequently. And I would also find reference for who's drawing these animals in a way that I like. Who's got a style that I think suits the tone of the comic. So like going back to cats, for example, Tex Avery draws the cutest cats. And it's not that they're drawn I mean, this is not an actual good cute cat, but this is an example of someone trying to be cute and failing. It's not drawn in like a cutesy way, but he really captures kind of this winsome quality of kittens that just, you know, they can get away with any sort of, all sorts of misbehavior. They can ruin your favorite clothes. They can pee all over your art and you'll forgive them because they're kittens. And Tex Avery really did a good job with that. For dinosaurs, depending on what you're doing, you either want to look to like Don Bluth, The Land Before Time, or you want to look to uh, James Gurney's work with Dinotopia. And I mean, I really think of the two, Dinotopia might be the stronger because, well, no, because Bluth is also able to capture both terrifying dinosaurs and then really cute baby dinosaurs. And the same is true for Dinotopia. But what's cool about Dinotopia is he's able to do it in a more realistic way. And I think I'm going to do something like an opossum, just because I think they're really cute and not a lot of people think they're really cute. kind of like cute little garbage monkeys. Oh, here's a really good image. Okay, so I have an image of an opossum hanging in a tree and his little limbs are all splayed out. So this is good because it captures the idea of a possum, at least for those of us who are familiar with possums. It's also kind of cute. So it, it, it serves a lot of purposes. It sort of is like the quintessence or the essence of, <laughs> of what an opossum is, what we think of when we think of possums. And then it's also just like cute in a fun pose. So one of the reasons you would do a lot of figure studies if you were to draw an animal character consistently is you want to kind of figure out a system for breaking down their anatomy, a system for sort of thinking about how this animal is put together, how to capture the gesture, how to capture the feel of this animal. Like here I drew his eyes. I mean, possums do have kind of like little black panda eyes, but I drew them too panda-like. So you would make notes, you kind of talk yourself through it. You would practice doing slow, careful studies. You would do quick gestural studies, just trying to capture how the animal moves, how the animal sort of feels the gesture, you know, go for stuff that feels right. I mean, in Seven Inch Kara, I draw in these later chapters, I draw pancake grooming his butt a lot because that's what my cat Bowie does. So to me, that feels right for that character. And then with some animals, they're honestly cuter if you get really, really sloppy when you draw them. 
because they already look kind of ragtag and then drawing them really loose and sloppy just kind of pushes that. You can see, as I did this video, I worked my way through animals that I've already kind of figured out a system for, like cats and dinosaurs. I used to draw a lot of dinos all the way to an animal that I think is cute and I know what they look like and I'm familiar with them, but I've, I don't think I've ever drawn a possum before. And I thought about doing a, a raccoon for you guys, but I've drawn a lot of raccoons because I think they're also very cute. That's that Louisiana in me, y'all. And uh, I wanted to kind of show a progression of like animals I'm moderately comfortable with to animals I've never drawn before because when I do these videos with you guys, I always like to add an element of, you know, potential for failure, potential for problem solving. Because that allows me to have an opportunity to grow also. Oh yeah, and then they have their, t <laughs> so their body hair ends and then there's just like this naked pink tail, which is so funny to me. I mean, it's better for grip strength. They have prehensile tails, but you know. And maybe I'll block in like common fur patterns. And possums like raccoons have these weird little hand things. So maybe for my next sketch, I would find one where I can see his weird little hand better. This one looks kind of like a, he's playing possum. He's pretending to be dead. And then they have these horror mouths which can be fun too. But this one's good because I can see, well, I can see his mouth, but I can also see his little possum paws. So their arms tend to be dark, and then they have these little pink, long little pink fingers that come off. And they tend to have white heads with like mottled, fur colors on the bodies, and this little guy, you can't even see his legs. And we've got a close-up of a baby, which is good because we can really see that face shape. And he's got kind of a, almost like a baseball diamond kind of shape. And then, let's see, all of this is his muzzle. And if you really are interested in drawing cartoony animal characters, I really recommend you check out Anthro Art because they've got that figured out to a science. And a lot of them take it really seriously, researching the animals that they're depicting. I mean, if you're new to this, obviously you should do it with Safe Search on because there's definitely some not safe for work stuff. Oh, so, see, if I were going to draw him as a character, I got to redraw his eyes, because... And then they have these kind of cute, this little baby has these translucent little Mickey Mouse ears going on. And their head kind of divots down there. And then they've got like a million whiskers. And this little fella, his paws coming forward. Anyway, though, yeah, I know that looks like a nightmare, but the point is do a lot of drawings, draw the animals from a lot of different angles, kind of try to figure out what makes that animal look unique, practice different styles of cartooning. I mean, Mickey Mouse doesn't even look like a mouse. It's like a sack of potatoes with some rubber hose arms and legs, um, gloves tied to its hands, some shoes, and these huge ears. Mickey Mouse doesn't look like a mouse, but it works. We believe it, we buy in. So, you know, if you're doing an animal like a possum, your possum might not really look like a possum, but as long as the audience kind of believes that it's a possum, then it doesn't really matter how accurate. I mean, this is scary looking, like I would not, Maybe if, if Carol was being attacked by a possum, I would draw a possum like that. But 
if I'm trying to sell a possum character and I want people to identify with and like this possum character, I gotta find a way to draw this little guy in a cute way. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna give his little, maybe draw him more from the side and then maybe mm, not smaller eyes because then they come off as beady. I don't want to go too big either because possums really have just like little black eyes, beady little black eyes. So got to think about how I can draw that in a way that's a little more accessible and a little bit easier. To, oh man, this would take a lot. Maybe emphasize, make it look more like a cat. They have such large mouths though. And then they have all those little teeth. Maybe if I made the nose really big and then it would make the mouth look a little bit smaller. Anyway, there's lots of ways you can kind of play with your proportions, play with how you do things when you're constructing animal characters, when you're sort of figuring them out for the first time. And sometimes you just hit a wall where it's not gonna work. Like I was doing a pitch with a little frog girl and a little alligator girl and I could get the frog girl really cute, but I was having a really hard time with the alligator girl because I only had a double page spread to convey my information. And I just didn't, there wasn't enough room for the audience to be able to see that she was an alligator and for her to come across as a sympathetic character. So sometimes you just don't have enough time or enough space to make it work and you have to kind of start from scratch. Anyway, this was just kind of a basic animal drawing tutorial. There are some really phenomenal resources here on YouTube, on the internet, and books that if you enjoy animals, I highly recommend you check them out. The Force series by Michael, uh, yeah, Michael D. Matisse has an animal drawing book, and I can actually grab that for you guys right now. And this could really be a phenomenal resource. There's also, like I said, loads of anthro artists who really understand the animals they're drawing. And if you're looking to draw cartoony animals, that's a good place to kind of start. And also just see what other artists you admire are doing. How does Disney handle animals? I mean, if you're drawing deer, watch Bambi, do some character sketches from Bambi, that sort of thing. Just so that you kind of get your feet and kind of get a feeling for what you're going for. The more media you consume, the more media you sort of analyze and you think about and you draw reference from, the stronger your work's going to be because it's all just presenting tools that you can use. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys again really soon. I hope this was helpful, useful, and informative for you guys. Bye, guys.